Hello, hello, hello. So excited to come to you today, ladies, with a very passionate topic that I have to share that has a lot to do with you stepping into your values, being unapologetically you and allowing the man to invest in you, to put you as a priority, to treat you like you are the price. Yes, we're going to talk about today how you can train your neurons, your neuronal network to actually receive, to actually know what to do with all of those energies, right, that are coming your way with the attention or with the compliments or with the flowers, with the gifts, with anything that comes your way that's actually positive, that's actually investing in you. Because what happened up until this point is you learn to give your power away, right? So the energy is moving away. The energy is moving towards another person. The compliments are moving towards another person. Um, absolutely flipping lutely. Adon, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, ladies, go ahead, pop your comments in the question sec in the comment section as well right? But like just really this outgoing energy, right? And, and then here's the thing too. It's just so, this is so powerful because I just read this today in another Facebook group and it just fired me up because it really reminded me of what I used to do as well. So I know how painful it is. And so, but I want to just go quickly into this, right? So we're giving our power away, like we're, we're giving the wrong men the benefit of the doubt, right? We're like not setting boundaries. We're, we're actually paying for men, right? Like actually helping them out. I mean, I've read so many crazy stories in the Facebook group, like that are, <clears throat> I don't want to say crazy, but I just want to really unnormalize it because we are normalizing it and we're saying it's normal to support a man who needs support and who doesn't have a job and who needs help with immigration and who does this, uh, this, 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 and the other, right? So again, it's a lot of like you strengthen your muscle to give, which feels already so familiar to you. However, it's leading to more and more atrophy of the receiving muscle, right? You actually receiving energy towards yourself so you can actually metabolize it. Hey, Julia, hello from California. Love it, love it, love it. So what happened in this particular case? I, and I love it. I just, uh, by the way, I'm like really one of those types who are just, I do really well when I respond to something that I see, right? Like very something really specific instead of like talking about just some general themes. And so what I saw, and this goes actually along with also what you ladies asked to get more support with, is this woman and she had this like grandiose idea. I know grandiose, uh, take it as a little bit of an ironic remark on my side, Th uh, to, you know, to take her boyfriend away for five days, all expenses paid. And while he's, by the way, financially struggling, right? And I had to hold myself back like, like I almost wrote, can you write doormat any bigger on the wall? Because have, you have to think about it, that kind of woman, and then I, I go into this, how this relates to me and why I'm so passionate about it and how I did this myself as well, right? But like that kind of woman has the story that she has to give to get. Because she also talked about how her best friend did that one and a half years ago. And what ended up happening is that her best friend got proposed to and the man knew that she was the woman for him in that moment and so on. Let me tell you, ladies, if that's the moment where your man knows because you're actually taking care of him, like that's not the kind of man that you want to attract, not according to all the research and all the um, <clears throat> polls that I've taken over the years from you, what you're looking for, the qualities you desire to have in a partner. Because last time I checked, here are the qualities of the, uh, that you wanted to attract in a partner, right? I, I saw supportive cherishes you, protects you, you feel taken care of. You can actually lean back because you've always been the provider. You've taken care of the kids. You've taken care of extended family or you take care of the company. And it's time, like you actually desire to be seen in all of your colors of the rainbow, okay? Um, and so then this is not the kind of man because that kind of man who's actually saying, wow, this woman pays for me all expenses paid while I can't pay for myself, 
So it's already like showing, okay, that's a distorted masculine. Something is going on with him, with his like self-value, with his confidence, with his consistency, with his integrity, commitment to where he is, right? Where he can't even pay for himself. He doesn't have enough savings, investments. So a lot is going on there that you can already see about this man. And then what happens is, right, like saying, okay, well, you know what? Like this guy's probably emasculated by his environment, uh, maybe by his mom, maybe how he grew up, who knows, who knows, who knows. Um, but instead, and then the woman is saying, oh yeah, like he's going to propose to me. Yeah, of course he does because he thinks that you're the masculine now. So he's like, mommy, mommy has finally come home. But the last time I checked and I'm really, um, it, what I'm really excited about is that my husband worked with men for 10 years. So we have unique research, right? By men from all ages, all stages. We're talking really like contractors to lawyers, to doctors, to uh, entrepreneurs and so on, living all over the world, um, all kinds of ages and so on, right? And, and they really said, um, you know what this feels like when a woman's like paying for that much and like just putting herself out there and just, it's really like if she goes out, shoots the deer or shoots the bison and then puts it like on a plate and basically say here my dear right so he's like i'm i want to shoot the bison that's like part of my purpose right there is like there is an activation that occurs inside of me when i do that right there, there is like there's like an energy there's like a spirit that i have to work with to overcome my fear to be killed and so you're taking that away from me. That means you're taking the drive away from me. You're taking the ability to initiate away from me. You're also taking the momentum away from me that will make you, make me ask you out over and over and over again. Right? So very powerful. Like you can't underestimate when we talk about the animal level. Like you can't underestimate the primitive level. We refer to it as the wild woman and the wild man. Okay? And, um, and of course, go ahead, pop in questions as well as they come up for you, ladies. Hello, Kristen. Hello, Juliana. Um, Kristen just said, many women don't feel they can ask for what they want out of a partner. Um, Juliana just said, you know, I was never taught that and I'm 52. Yes. See, by the way, I'm very, I'm very uh, convinced that I'm going to homeschool my kids right once we're gonna have kids because this is not going to be promoted in school right but it should be really much a conversation masculine and feminine polarity right like dating how to deal with the opposite sex all of that should be taught there should be an understanding of the distorted masculine the distorted feminine what happens when they're hyperpolarized and so on and how to avoid that what leads to low confidence what leads to high self-confidence i mean you just like get me fired up here when it comes to that that there shouldn't be a woman who's 52 and not know about this but what happens instead and we open up Cosmopolitan, right? This used to be one of my favorite magazines. And it's just like, you know, just just do this and just do that, right? Like it's just so manipulative in a way. And unfortunately, it's also very superficial, very similar to The Rules, the book that we, of course, all known and have got, has gotten highly criticized over the years as being just too one-dimensional. It just didn't take too many dimensions into consideration, right? It didn't take too many variations into considerations. Okay, so this is the thing, right? So just think about this. This woman, she basically, and by the way, she gave her power away, right? Because she's not even doing that out of the goodness of her heart. She's doing that because her girlfriend did that and got the right result. One thing I teach my women who work with me, right, is you can do the wrong thing with the right energy and you will get the right results. So here's the thing. I'm going to get to this question in a moment, Julia. Thank you for that. So you don't know what energy this woman had, why this guy ended actually proposing to her. So you think it's the action. Well, it could have been actually the wrong action that in general, this action is actually a horrible idea. But maybe she had the right energy, which means she was coming from her heart or she's loving herself or that's what God told her to do in the moment. And so it was like the right thing. Maybe she was really truly coming from alignment. It was an inspired action. 
versus using it as a manipulative action, as like saying, you know what, I want this outcome of him proposing to me, so I'm going to pay for him. Let me tell you one thing, ladies, you can't pay for true love. Like you can't, you can't, you can't. And I'm so glad you can't because I know some of you literally would, which is sad, but we would do it because that's how much we really crave that true love. But instead, true love occurs. True love actually percolates from an authentic dynamic. So one example I want to bring here too with like doing the wrong thing with the right energy. So you could say, <clears throat> so I actually was the biggest bitch to my husband the night before he proposed to me. So I was really stressed out. I was dealing with some finals. It was a Friday night. And then I think I had the finals on Saturday. And then Saturday night he proposed to me, right? And so one person could say, my girlfriend could observe that and say, Oh, Angie was the biggest bitch the night before Brody proposed to her. So I should be the biggest bitch. But you don't know from which context it was coming from. I was aligned. I had shown up. I had shown all my colors. I had done a whole shadow ceremony with my husband. I already had called myself out uh, to my husband and told him that I wanted to manipulate him. So I had created a tremendous amount of trust. So you can't just take something out of context and just copy it and just hope you get the same results, okay? Um, Julia said, when, if ever, should women pay? So I would say, I mean, just, just it's more about like really seeing like at least like until like you have the ring on your finger, um, if not later, you know, because at some point, of course, you're going to talk about uh, when you like merge bank accounts, how does that look like? You guys have individual bank accounts that will depend on who's the saver, who's the uh, who's the uh, who's the, uh, the spender, so to say, right? Or who's the money monk, or you know? So there's all those different types of how uh, people manage money. So that depends, of course, on that situation as well. And I highly recommend sitting down with a professional, like with a marriage family counselor. Um, at the very least, definitely a financial uh, person who has some sort of psychology background, okay? Um, but in general, I would say for this woman, the reason why I didn't recommend it is because she even said that he was struggling financially. So there is already a polarity, right? There is already a loss of masculinity. He already feels like he can't provide for her. And now she silently emasculates him even further by, by paying for the trip, right? Um, because think about it, how masculine do you think the man is going to feel going on that trip, being taken care of by the woman, right? So, um, so for Bruni and me, for example, we, we ended up not really talking about who paid. It was just like really natural because we were like kind of merging accounts anyways. I mean, we quickly built our business together anyways, but yeah, I mean, he was, he was inviting me, you know, he was paying the bills and so on. Um, you know, if there's like an occasional, like, you know, let's say he's, you're in a park or in a zoo or something and you just grab the coffees and you pay for them. Um, that's one thing, right? But I would definitely not pick up the bill when you're in the restaurant. And the reason why is, and this is coming from research from masculine men, right? Because they literally say like, stop. I had so many women in my program actually tell me that the men are telling them to stop, you know, they get almost like upset. And it's also, I love this because it's a really good filter because you really see who's cheap, right? Who, who needs the other person to invest? Who doesn't really want to be in their masculine? Who secretly wants to be taken a, a care of, right? And those are the guys who are, um, you know, Patty Stenger was so funny. She, she was just bringing this example. Um, she used a millionaire matchmaker, right? But she was bringing this example um, where this guy just took her out and literally all she had was a salad and he would stare at the receipt, like of the bill, like for half an hour, she had a salad, you know what I mean? It's not like she had like a lobster galore, you know what I mean? Or to, the steak or whatever it is. Um, so it's a good way to actually see, wow, how is this man responding? How generous is this man, right? Is this man happy to pay or is he going to be like, uh, can you pay for this? And so it's a really, really good filter. Um, 
yeah, Juliana, totally. I pay for nothing for my new boyfriend. True love can't be bought. Um, Juliana just said, like, everybody, he's paying for everything. So good, right, Juliana? Exactly. He feels so good about it. You know, I just saw this other post in a Facebook group, too, where a woman was actually sharing how the guy was, like, just so happy. Like, he was so happy to provide. You know what I mean? He was so happy to surprise her. So why wouldn't you? So think about it this way, ladies, right? So if you give your girlfriend a gift, so I'm just going to say girlfriend, right? Because that way, you know, uh, polarity. So let's say you give your girlfriend a gift, right? And she's like, oh no, I don't, I don't want that gift. But let's say you put a lot of thought into it. You're really excited to give her the gift, you know? And you're just like, you can't wait to see her face and how excited she is and the state change that it creates. And then she's just like, no, Juliana, no, I don't really want that Julia. You know, I don't really want this Allison. Like, what? You know, in that moment, you actually like bring the energy down of the person, right? Like you actually gifting the person by accepting the gift and just really saying thank you so much because when somebody wants to pay for you right like they want to pay for you they, they it comes from their heart they thought this through they're excited about it they're excited to invite you right like if i say to my friend and we're going out i say uh don't worry we just went out with a with a couple friend you know they're just gonna engage so sweet and we like we said we got it you know what i mean and it was like it would have been so weird if they would have said, oh, no, like, you know, really, you know, and they were just like so grateful and they were like celebrate, celebratory and, and it felt so good for us to like contribute to them. So to really never underestimate how amazing it feels to a man when he gets to contribute to you. And after all, you want to really hand a man a resume, an emotional resume that you, that you, that you're good at receiving, right? You're like warming up those receiving neurons, so to say, even if they were numb for a while, because all the men that you were dating were cheap or, or you know, or you had to pay for yourself or they say, uh, let's go Dutch or anything like that. But instead to be actually like, so again, so what I want to go back to is really this whole idea of the doormat, right? And the reason why I talk about the doormat so much, because that used to be me. Oh my gosh. I... Like, what, however you could give your power away, I've literally done that, right? Like, I mean, I literally stalked a guy and I sat in his driveway. That was like when I was, I don't know, 20, 20 or something. Uh, I sat in his driveway, waited for him to come home because I called him already like 20 times and he didn't answer and all the things. And then eventually, <clears throat> and it was dark and it was in Hamburg and it was freezing cold. It was in the winter, right? And like, I'm like, I was set in this driveway. And so eventually his sister came home and told me, don't get your, head, uh, your hopes up. You know, she gave me like hot cocoa and she was so sweet. But she was like, you know, he's really a player, right? Which of course was to be expected. Um, and then not only that, but he ended up flirting with my girlfriend who just called him to test. You know, we always do that, right? At least when we were like younger, we always do those crazy things where she tested him and she pretended she's like this girl who just called the wrong number and she started flirting with him and he totally flirted back with her and asked her, you know, to see her and some, all of that. So, you know, I've done crazy things like that. You know, when a man ghosted on me, I would literally put on my, uh, my, my skates, uh, when I was like arriving at the, um, at the train station again, I was, when I was a little younger, like 20, 19 or 20, right? And I was like skating to the person's house. And so I was saying, he ghosted me. He didn't pick me up from the train station. Okay, what else do I need to know? So it's again, it's it's like, instead of like, instead of saying, wow, that's already pretty embarrassing and that's already pretty shame. <clears throat> well, causing, right? Like, let me just turn the board around because it's already pretty embarrassing. I doubled up on it, right? So I went into more anxiety. Right, same with like, like literally the weekend before I went, um, I left Germany to go to the US and I was dating this guy, I'd been dating for several months and uh, same thing, couldn't get a hold of him, drove in the middle of the night, my dad was so upset because my dad is like psychic, you know, it's kind of a little annoying, you know what I mean, when you have like a parent who's like so in tune things, so I was staying with my parents, I was just um, on my way out uh, to move to the US and, uh, you know, I was just driving in the middle of the night to my then whatever boyfriend ex-boyfriend whatever we were situationship um and was ringing his doorbell and he would just like not open 
And so, gosh, I've been there. I've given so much of my power away. Like, like you can't give any more power away than that, right? Like, it's really just, yeah. And so that's why I'm so passionate about really turning this boat around and allowing yourself to step into your queen and to actually strengthen your muscle to receive, right? To truly receive. And if you're not receiving, look, he's not that interested in you. When men are interested in you, listen to your girlfriends, listen to stories, go here on YouTube, you know, find the stories, what men are capable of when they are interested in you. Look, I was dating this guy when I was 19 and he was such an avoidant. And so what ended up happening is a couple years later, I came, went back to Germany for visit and I just wanted to have a closing conversation with him. Literally, no strings attached, definitely no outcome. I was so done with this guy because he had really broken my heart. But he totally turned around to such an extent that when I went back to the U.S. after my trip to Germany, right, he actually wanted to visit me in the U.S., fly over 10,000 of miles into a country that he absolutely hated with his guts, you know, had some political reasons, whatever. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, right? Like, he had this whole story of like, well, you know, guys, and when they have the heart and all the things, you know, they just can't do it. And, you know, they're just busy. And then you see like someone who like literally hates that country to be like, I'm going to be there. I already signed up for this conference in Santa Barbara. I'll be there. Right. That really showed me, wow, when a man is interested in you, look, I have stories after stories of people connecting across the world. You know, my girlfriend, she met her guy at a conference. She lived in Germany. He lived in New Zealand. She met him in Miami, like halfway, literally, right? And so they started dating, you know? And he turned this whole world upside down for them to move together uh, to Michigan and live in the U.S. And so, look, don't buy into any beliefs and any stories that you hear, right? Like why a man can do some, can't do something because they're going to be just as many reasons why a man very much, very much can do something. Yeah, Juliana, I love that, right? We all play detective at some point in some manner. <laughs> I love that. It's a beautiful, beautiful photo of you. Um, awesome, awesome. Ladies. So just really quickly, I got to wrap it here because I have a call coming up in a couple of minutes. But if you haven't joined already my free Facebook group, go ahead, do that. Mymfbgroup.com. Um, and if you haven't taken my free quiz, if you're like, gosh, Antje, I'm ready for this. I was in that same spot that you were. I was giving all my power away. But I also know, wow, there are men out there. Or maybe I don't even know that there are men out there. And you really just inspired me and showed me for the first time of my life that there's actually men out there who will literally pursue me. Hop on over to mymquiz.com. We'll actually see exactly what's happening for you. So we're playing a little bit engineer and detective, what Juliana just said, to find out what's happening for you and uh, why it seems to be a little bit of a challenge to attract that into your life and to also feel safe with receiving, really feel safe, authentically safe with receiving. You know, this is like a whole different conversation that we should have at some point. Ladies, I hope this was helpful for you. Lots of love to you. And I will talk to you in the next live. Mwah, mwah. Take care.